Hi YouTubers, Norma Shepard here with another episode of Hat Chat. Welcome back. I'm the director of the Mobile Millinery Museum and the author of five books on vintage fashion, including 1,000 hats. And isn't this the silliest, uh, sort of serious, sort of silly hat from the 1960s? This is the variation on a pillbox. And it is, uh, let's see... Uh, Saks Fifth Avenue. It's fashioned from Jersey knit fabric and these cubes that are <laughs> covered in the brown and pink fabric are adorable. Just so cute, so different. Uh, these are little combs, little plastic combs that are inset on the inner crown which is lined. <laughs> these are just to uh, kind of sit in your hair and secure the hat. I was going to do this video earlier but my husband took a tumble. He's fine. I have patched him up just feeling a little guilty because he was working in the backyard and I was sitting on the phone in the front yard when he was trying to call me. So you know I kind of let the call go a couple times and then when I realized he was calling me a third time I thought oh, this might be important. The funny thing about it is um, I had very little sleep last night but when I did sleep I had this nightmare and <laughs> I dreamed of this giant bug that was on my arm basically you know from my hand to my elbow a giant thing it actually kind of looked like this and in the dream it was the bug was paralyzing me and I couldn't move so I couldn't knock the bug off of me and it was terrifying so in the dream, I was trying desperately to call for help. And um, I don't know if you've ever had that experience where you're trying to scream or yell in your dream and eventually you wake yourself up, uh, but you really can't, can't get it out. So funny that in the dream, you know, I was calling for help. And then uh, in my waking life, he was the one calling me for help. I think it's a pretty easy dream to figure out because uh, <laughs> bugs... I think often um, represents something that's bugging you. So in trying to figure out my own dream, I kind of come away with the idea that I'm kind of paralyzed when it comes to what's bugging me and maybe I need some help. But it's funny too that in my waking life, I've really been drawn to bug jewelry lately. This one, this one with the ladybugs, uh, this is a really cool bracelet which came actually in a jewelry jar. And I just have to replace a couple of the rhinestones. It's kind of fun. And then this one I purchased at a thrift store not too long ago. And I think I paid $25 for this. So that's a vintage piece. Um, but it's funny because, well, maybe it's not funny. It is, uh, we are getting on to October and of course that's costume season. Uh, so I've noticed that there's a lot of, uh, costume jewelry in the shops now with spiders and things but also some uh, some other bugs uh, I saw one yesterday um, it was a cuff with a giant bug uh, with onyx and rose quartz and I probably should probably should have brought it home because as you know three of anything is a collection so three bug bracelets would be another sub collection and that'd be kind of fun anyway to get on with the hats um, I was thinking about Sadie Hawkins Day. Uh, it's not a leap year, but of course, if you um, think of the old tradition during leap year, it was the women who were allowed to propose to a man or ask him out, and uh, that was, made it kind of fun. Um, I met my husband in high school on a leap year, and our high school had a leap year dance that year, so I invited him, and off we went. The thing was you had to go in costume, sort of sort of hillbilly-ish, that type of thing. And my mother decided that it'd be a good idea if I made a little a little shift dress out of a potato sack. It'd be really easy. You just, you know, cut a hole for the neck, cut holes for the for the armholes, and just wear a little slip underneath, and that's what I did. Now the hubby he wore a straw hat. And uh, when we went to the dance, I paid the five bucks and asked Mary and Sam to get us hitched. So 
So we stood in line with a bunch of other couples, and uh, we had the sort of the whole hillbilly Mary and Sam um, experience, and it was a lot of fun. Thing is, my father had always told me he he's a minister, and he had told me that you have to be very careful when you are um, doing a wedding or he, when he was doing wedding rehearsals not to to have the couple say the words as you were rehearsing you know you tell them where to stand you tell them what to expect but you don't actually go through the service uh, ahead of time because if you do then you've actually performed the actual wedding so I kind of always thought of that old potato sack dress as maybe my first wedding gown my hubby and I, we did marry five years later. I just thought I'd pull up some straws. It's pretty amazing what people can do with straw. And these old, well, I don't know how old they are, but um, of course you can still get hats like this um, in the islands. Look at how um, clever this is with all the weaving. This is done by hand. And you know, it's fashioned into actually a sort of a Stetson style hat. And surprising, or maybe it's not surprising, it's uh, it's kind of comfortable. You know, it's cool. It keeps the sun off. And it's kind of fun. Of course, for the ladies, <laughs> you have these very large, colorful straw hats. And this one is from the 70s. I just love how this, again, has been um, hand done. And I'll show you the inside where they start. And look at the wonderful patterning and the colors in this. So, and... It, my girlfriend in the 70s had a hat very much like this. Wore it with a little bikini. Uh, really shades your really shades your face. And it's just kind of fun. Thank you. So there you have it. Time for me to check on the hubby again. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please hit like, share, subscribe. And uh, leave me questions and comments on whether it's hats, vintage fashion, even if you want to chat about dreams. I'm happy to discuss that. Have a happy day and I will see you Monday.